Hey guys, Neve here and catfish quarantine continues, but now at my dad's house in Long Island. We've got a grumpy baby here who just woke up from a nap. You grumpy? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you a little tired? Welcome to my new apartment. So excited. Everything is not done, but I'm slowly but surely getting there. Biggie is loving his new home. As long as Biggie's happy, I'm happy. So let's text. Hammy, hey, hey, hey. Look what I've got. Let's work. Oh, whoa. Welcome to MTV Cribs. What is that apartment? That's not your normal spot. No, this is my new place. Isn't is that one of those, cute? like, is that one of those Zoom backgrounds? Don't play with me. You have a different setup too. That's right, I am now stationed out of my father's bedroom. We've taken over his house because me, Laura, and the kids are all upstairs. His bedroom, which is the only place he has for privacy, is now Catfish HQ. <laughs> anyway, why don't we see if we got some email? Oh, we do. Ooh. I've already put myself in danger more than once for this guy. Wow, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means and I'm afraid to find out. Yeah. Hola, my name is Dianella. I've been talking to a guy named Jose that I met while playing video games four years ago. Huh. He's everything I want in a guy. Smart, ambitious, and really cute. But what I like most is how much he supports me. He even stood by me when my mom unexpectedly passed away. Oh. But in four years, we have never video chatted or met up. When we started talking, we both lived in different cities in Venezuela. What? Crazy. Things are dangerous in Venezuela, and we both have now sought asylum in the US. This is like a wild international love story out of a movie. Yeah. I was excited to surprise him when I arrived in the US. You make me wanna lose when I pushed to meet up, he told me he wanted nothing to do with me. I was devastated and heartbroken. Then, about two months ago, he reached back out to me to rekindle things, but I was too stressed with getting my legal status to deal with him. Now that I'm settled, I realize I still have feelings for Jose. And that's why I'm hoping you'll help me. Looking forward to hearing from you, Dianella. Jeez. Something doesn't feel right. Do you think if you both moved here under similar conditions, which were less than ideal, even if it's not romantic, you'd think he'd still just want to have a friendship, but he wanted nothing to do with her. Something's not right with this guy. I think either he was never from Venezuela or maybe he is from Venezuela, but he never came to the US. Right. I don't feel good about it. I'd like to just get the story firsthand from the source. Dianella, dressed in yellow, went upstairs to kiss the fella. Hello! Hey. Oh, you're so pretty. Thank you. You're, you're a two. Look at that little chihuahua. Oh, that's, that's a cute. my little baby. That's um, Mini Pincher. He's not a chihuahua. Oh. He's my partner in crime. <laughs> All right, so I want to know all about you. You've got a really interesting story. First, I just want to know about you. Well, I'm 22 years old. I was born and raised in Maracaibo, Venezuela. And then I moved to the United States last year to Memphis, Tennessee, because the situation in Venezuela is very hard right now. Memphis from Venezuela. I feel like that must be like the craziest culture shock ever. Yeah, my dad had some friends here. And you know, it's good to have someone where you can count on. Yeah. No, I get that. So tell us about Jose and how you guys met and kind of the whole story. Well, I met Jose in 2017 playing Black Ops 3 on the PS4. Yeah, wow. yeah, like video games. So we played several times and uh, we started chatting. Like text chat or was that like with your headset? With my headset, yeah. Oh. Got it, so you, you heard yeah. his voice. Yeah. He was speaking Spanish? Yeah, Spanish and we became friends really quick. We were both from the same country, but he's from Merida, and I'm from Maracaibo, which is like 10 hours apart by car. Wow. 
and he asked for my number and we started talking every day at that time he was my mom's passing i just shut down myself and i didn't want to you know to talk to anybody and he was the only person i talked to he was kind of like a rock to me he just had the right words to make me feel better so um he became like real 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 special to me and i felt a really strong connection with him that I didn't feel with anybody else. So I started catching feelings for him and uh, Jose told me there was a chance of us meeting up at the beginning of 2018. And when Jose told me that, like my, my heart, it started jumping. But why didn't you guys end up meeting up? Well, when the time was getting closer, um, he started acting a little bit weird. I asked what was wrong and he told me that all this time we've been talking, he had a girlfriend. Oh. So I got really upset and I was like, you're not gonna break my heart and get away with it. We're gonna meet up and we're gonna clear things up face to face. Right now is the moment I'm going, so please be there to pick me up. You were gonna fly to where he lives? No, I took a bus. Wow. To there. 10 hours. And it is very dangerous to a 19 year old to travel alone in a bus. I love my country, but it's dangerous. A 10 hour bus ride? Yeah, I did that. And when I got there, it was getting dark and he was not there. I called him, he didn't reply. I texted him and he didn't show up. He totally ghosted me. And uh, that's insane. Yeah, I'm it's... trying to, I'm really trying to wrap my brain around why we're even still talking about this guy because if he could leave you in the middle of the night. I put myself in danger. Right. Well, after he didn't show up, I was so scared. I bought a ticket again to Maracaibo very, very late at night. You took this bus for 20 hours, over 20 hours. Yeah. When I was getting, uh, Closer to, to Maracaibo, I received a text and it was him. He told me he got robbed. Oh God. I didn't believe him. I was totally heartbroken. It, it shattered me and I didn't want to talk to him or see him anymore. Understandably that. so. So that's awful. Yeah. When was that? That was on the beginning of 2018. So how did you get from that to then talking to him again? On my birthday, he sent me a gift. It had a, like a lot of balloons and flowers and some empanadas and pequeños. That's nice. Yeah. That's cute. Oh, so this guy, I mean, look, I, I, as much as I want to hate this guy, I have to admit that is very nice. It is the most precious gift I have ever received. And so I text him say, thank you. It was so sweet of you. And after that, we started talking again. So did the gift have like a card on it with his name and address? Yeah, with his name. No address. No, no address. How did he know your address? Because I told him. Okay, so you texted him and you said thank you. Yeah, and so we started talking again. And about the possibility of us meeting up by the end of year. That never happened. No, that never happened because by the end of 2018, when the time was getting closer to meeting up, he told me that his new job needed him to come to the States. What was his new job? Computer engineering. So I was kind of sad, but I told him, well, I have a visa, so we can just meet there. And he was like, that's a great idea. And the next year, the following year, my dad came here to Memphis, Tennessee. So I decided that it was the moment, obviously the main reason was the situation in Venezuela, but I was also following my heart to go meet the guy that I, that I've been caring of. Wow. And when I got to Miami's airport. Was he in Miami? Yeah, he was in Miami. I told him maybe our time was not in Venezuela. Maybe right now is the moment. Let's just meet up. And he told me he didn't want anything to do with me and that he didn't want to see me. Why? What was his explanation? He just said he didn't feel interested anymore. He just didn't care. And at that moment, I felt so heartbroken. I put myself out there for you. Like, this is the second time. You risk it all to meet him, but it doesn't feel like he's doing the same thing for you. Yeah. So why him? I honestly haven't 
felt the connection I felt with him with anybody. I can talk to him like like I used to talk with my mom, you know? Mm. And I haven't felt that again. Wow. He reached out to me two months ago. Now it was him who wanted to meet me, but I was honestly too heartbroken. I just couldn't forget everything I went through. Yeah. But now is the moment that I feel like this is the last shot. The, the last risk I'm gonna take for us, for me. Because it's been a lot, you know? Like, why haven't you FaceTimed or video chatted? How has that not happened? Well, because he told me once that his camera was not working. And the salary in Venezuela, it's $2 per month. Per month or per week? Per month. $2 per month. What can you get? That's nothing. Nothing. Wow. There are a lot of people starving and stuff. It is not affordable to buy a new phone or or fix your camera, you know? Right. Did you ever get his social media? Like, did you know what he looked like? I didn't have the social media because uh, he told me he didn't use that. Have you seen a lot of pictures of him? Do you have some, at least one that you can show us now? Yeah, of course. Oh, here we go. Drum roll, please. We're gonna see how hot he is. This is him. Oh. He is hot. <laughs> okay. Wait, his name is Jose? Yeah, Jose La Real. Why does his necklace have an R on it? Oh my god, I didn't figure that out. Okay. Oh. Wow. Some, ser yeah. some serious style. Well, Dianela. I don't know. What if he is a catfish? Like, then what? I'll be heartbroken. He knows that I don't do lies. And if he's not who I think he is, I will be heartbroken, so heartbroken. But if it is him, you'll be willing to forgive him for yes. all of this? Yes. Wow. We're gonna do some research, see if we can find out anything about Jose. Obviously, you'll send us his phone number and the pictures you have for him. We will get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Dianella, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, great. Bye. Bye, bye, ciao. All right, wow. Yeah, forgive me, I'm currently on Amazon ordering red flags because there are so many red flags in this story. There's so many missed moments and opportunities for what feels like could be true love. I don't like the fact that it feels like Dianella is chasing this man around the, the world and he keeps playing her out. On one hand, this feels like it could be one of the most amazing romantic love stories ever. And on the other hand, it could be a huge, devastating deceit. We've never had two hopeless hook up. An identical twin. <gasps> Everybody in Hawaii is in on this. <gasps> That's insane. We've never seen anything like this. The catfish sent you the real guy's Facebook page. Come on. 